Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle, aka Stitcherista here on YouTube, and today is Tuesday, January 11th. Today is actually would have been my aunt's 72nd birthday. Um, she passed, I want to say four or five years ago. I don't remember the exact date. Had to be because I was just diagnosed with breast cancer. So 2017 she passed? No, 2000. Good question. I want to say it was 2017. Anyway, that that's neither here nor there. So happen, happy heavenly birthday to my aunt and lots to chat about today. So let's talk about the Stitch Smart Stand because I had mixed reviews from you guys on it. And you know, so I'm sitting here yesterday after I did the video and I'm like, how am I going to work with this stand because it's not going to fit under the current chair that I have. The current chair that I have is a recliner. And if any of you that have recliners, there are bars underneath, right? And you need to pull that stand close to you because it doesn't, the, the top doesn't angle towards you very well. And I'm like, all right, well, looks like I need to get a new chair, right? The chair I have is 10 years old. I've been wanting a new chair off and on for a while because I never use the recliner part. My office is very small. It may look bigger than it looks, you guys seeing it, but the space that I have to work with is not big at all. And I think I do a fantastic job of putting a lot of stuff in a small space and not having it look too cluttered. So I measure the chair, I measure all kinds of stuff. I measure the fucking doorway because you got to be able to get the chair through the doorway, right? So I write all this down and I'm like, okay, I'm going to look on, where did I look first? Where did I look? I don't remember where I looked first and I wasn't happy with the selection. So I said, oh, I looked on Value City Furniture because there's a Value City that's like 10 minutes from the house. However, every fucking chair I liked um, online only. I actually wanted to go and sit in a chair. You know what I mean? And I was like, okay. Well, I'm going to have to go about this a different way, obviously. So I decided to go to Wayfair because Wayfair, oh my God, I did not know there were this many chairs in the entire world. So they had so many chairs. But what's nice about Wayfair is you can put in like the search engine or um, you can filter the results. And so I put in because my doorway is 29 inches, so it can't be any bigger than that. So I put in 29, and so it brought up everything. I spent a good hour. Now, if you have been watching my videos for any length of time and you know the kind of person I am, uh, this chair is gray. Nah, I'm not a gray person. I'm not a, no. I wanted something fucking colored, and I mean bold and bright. Because this is the one room in my house that I get to do what I want in. Because Bill's thing is, if we ever move and we want to sell this house, can't sell a house with a purple wall. Why? I'm not the only one out there that likes color. But when I moved in, he told me, you can paint your office any color you want. So there is bam, bam, bam color. So I was not looking for a chair that was gray or white or black. No, 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 no. Everything purple was fucking sold out. So I would have gotten a red chair. I'm looking for bright, bold colors. I finally settled. Now I had messaged him too, because I said, look, I want to get a new chair for my office. I said, so we're gonna have to discuss it when you get home because the chair is not gonna cost $50. It's gonna be like hundreds of dollars. And I don't spend that kind of money without talking to him first. Do you know what I mean? It's not like I'm asking his permission because that's not fucking happening. It's more like I'm consulting with you because you're my partner. Okay. So I texted him and he was like, you don't have to ask me. Like, just go buy it. Just go. So now I'm looking and looking and looking. There were some chairs that were 500, 600, 700. Fuck you. I'm not buying a chair that's that much. No. This one is 277. Where do you see it? It's bright orange. Let's go. 
like the orange is going to look so good up against that purple, isn't it? So here is the chair. If you follow me on Instagram, I posted a picture. Isn't it gorge? It's velvet. <gasps> it's going to be so soft and plus you to sit in. So I can't wait. It's going to be here next week, hopefully. I can't wait because I also measured, you know, I'll be able to put stuff like I'll be able to slide the stand underneath of it. I mean, it's just going to be so utterly fantastic. So I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, okay, how am I going to reorganize my office to accommodate this stand? Because the stand isn't on wheels. So every, if I, when I stitch with that stand, every time I get up, I'm going to have to move it and put it to the side. I'm going to flip you guys around and I'm going to show you how I kind of reorganized. But then I was thinking, okay, that stand is not optimal, in my opinion, for squirrel rods. So do I put stuff on Q-snaps again? Do I go back to using hoops, especially for something like the Fruit of Plenty sampler? So I take the Fruit of Plenty. Now, this is like the rest of my day and evening. I take the Fruit of Plenty off the scroll rods. I'm putting it on a hoop and there's all this fabric and I'm not happy. I'm not. And I moved stuff around. I had just tried to finagle so many things. And I'm thinking to myself, what in the hell am I doing, right? And it even took me, like I stitched like five stitches last night because I was fooling with this so much when Bill went to bed and I came in here for my like two or three hours of stitching. I was fooling with all of that setup. All to come back to, squirrel rods are my favorite. I'm of the mindset, now I like hoops and Q-snaps also, but I'm of the mindset that whatever size Q-snap or hoop that you use, it needs to encompass the whole design. Like you, I don't like to have to move or have a bunch of excess fabric. The reason why I love the scroll rods, especially the handy clamp ones, which are like a Q-snap, is because I can see the whole design this way, and then I can just roll it. You know what I mean? I don't mind doing that, and it's not a pain in the ass. Because I don't have to take those clamps off once I get it done. Have you ever tried to take clamps off of a Q-snap? You need, like, superhuman fucking strength. Yeah. And... I'm thinking to myself, wow, okay, what am I going to do here, right? I'm like, if I tell Bill that, okay, I decided I'm not going to use the stand, he's going to think I'm a loon, like I'm a crazy person. So what I decided to do, because I also bought this. Remember I told you I bought a clamp that that woman had used? It came in the mail yesterday. This is, this is the clamp. This is a ring light, but that you could actually use for like a stitching light because it's bright AF. And then this is the clamp for your phone. I tried to do a stitch with me. I tried to at least do a recording. It, it's not going to work for that because it's too wobbly. Like every time I touch my project, this moves. And I thought, I, I can't put up a stitch with me doing that. So this though is going to be used for tutorials because I'll be able to get nice and close to my project. And I also think that um, I'm going to use the Stitch Mart stand downstairs. I've been wanting to do smaller projects downstairs because sometimes I don't feel like sitting up here and stitching. And so I think, so that stand's going to be downstairs or used for tutorials. So I'm like, okay, well, am I going to go back to using the Lowry or the table, table clamp or whatever? Until I get the new chair, I ha I'm going to be using the table clamp, the Lowry clamp, because that's the best setup that I have at the moment. However, when I get the chair and I can fit something, slide something underneath of it, remember when I told you that I have every stand that's been known to man, and I'm not exaggerating. Like Bill said, we were, he, he was joking with me this morning and said, you could open up a museum. This is the stand that Martha Washington used in 1845. We were laughing so hard, but he has a, there's a little bit of truth in that, in that I literally have like five or six stands, if not more, not even counting like the smaller ones. But I, 
I don't like to anymore get rid of that stuff because I don't know how I'm going to change physically, mentally over the next 20 or so years. If there's ever a reason I need to stop stitching, well, then that would be a chance to sell all of that. But as of right now, no, I'll find a way, right? I also own a K Creations stand, their stainless steel stand, which is very similar to the Lowry, but there are differences. And the reason why I like that one is because the head of it, it can swivel. So you can really get the project where you want to in front of you. And the base will slide under, the base is flat like the Lowry, but the mechanisms of twisting like of the clamp on your project is a little different. Plus there is also, um, there is an accessory tray you can get for the Lowry, but there's a wooden one that comes with the K Creations. So I'm hoping this week, next week to pull that out. Like I said, I'm going to wait until I get the chair. There's no point pulling it out until I get the chair because I can't put it underneath the current chair I have. So, because that holds um, scroll rods fantastic, just like the Lowry does. And, you know, I'll still take the table clamp to retreats because it worked fantastic there when I was there in December. And, yeah, I mean, that will get put to use there. Um. And then I thought to myself, you know what? I realized too that some people and my husband might think, oh, that was a waste for you to buy that stand, but not really because it brought me around to getting a new chair that I didn't really push forth forward or really realize I wanted until I had that and realized I couldn't slide fucking anything underneath of it. I mean, I'll be able to uh, store the... Um, foot cushion that I have underneath this chair because like I said the space in this office is very very small and limited so I'm I'm limited okay and I will link this down below if anybody wants it um, it was 20 bucks on Amazon and what's nice is it has like a remote for the light because you can dim it and there's like three settings of lights it's really fantastic for $20 it's really unbelievable so loving that. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys what I did yesterday as far as organizing and really also tell you why I came to the conclusion that I love scroll rods. Um, there are a couple reasons why. But you know what I also realized? So I sat here last night and I'm like, there is no perfect setup. There is no one perfect setup because any setup I have had, and I have had a lot of different ones, there's always something that isn't exactly how I would like it or how I would like it. So I would say that most setups, at least the ones I have, they're about 95% great. And you know what? That's good enough. It has to be good enough because the time I spent last night going back and forth and, and racking my brain and all of that, I can't get that time back. I can't get that stitching time back. And that's the thing too, is that I don't want to keep twisting myself into a pretzel trying to find the perfect stitching setup because it's not going to happen. However, me getting a new chair is a long way, I feel, in going towards that. And the chair is velvet. I told you guys that. I can't wait to get the chair. Trust me, I will show you the new setup once I get it. Well, I'll be doing the video on the K creation stand for sure. But okay, I'm going to flip you guys around and I'm going to show you what I did. Okay. So this stayed the same. Here's the stand. This used to have um, my pattern little table and it used to have all of my projects that are like in flux, like all my project bags. What I did, let me stand up and show you. I moved that stuff over here. These are the patterns that I have. This basket was actually out in um, where I diamond paint. The basket is kind of stretchy. I want to say I got this at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, one of those places. You can see how much it fits in there. It fits quite a bit. Now, this cart is probably going to stay here because this is where... Hi, Cadbury. This is where um, I put my iPad when I sit here and stitch so I can watch shows. 
And then I also have here, I got those little 3M clips and I keep my highlighter and my scissors right there. So they're like at my fingertips, literally. So the only things I had to move was I moved my glass case here and then my Raycon earbuds. So once the chair goes here, my lamp is gonna stay the same, but this table is going to move. The only thing I literally have on the table now is my thread. Because remember, this is going to go downstairs because I'm gonna use it in my bedroom. And so I'm gonna move this table over here and I'm hoping it should fit. It should fit with no problem. And I'm actually going to be able, what's gonna be nice is I'm gonna be able to use this table. Yeah, it's a laptop table. So I normally, when I use a table clamp and I'm gonna to have to get, I put a 10 pound weight to counteract that. Anyway, um, I'm gonna move that table over and I'm just gonna have my K Creation stand facing this way because like I said, it has um, a little tray where I can put the threads on. I mean, I only have two threads, the two colors. So that is how that is going to work. I've already figured that out. But what's nice is, like I said, I'll be able to use this table. Like I'll probably be able to move this stuff. I'll be able to take the calendar and my candle holder instead of having it on my desk and keep it on here. I mean, there, there's going to be ways to go about that. So, scroll rod, let me finagle this. Really, right now? Let me move this over. Wow, I forgot that that was going to do that. Okay. So, I'm gonna show you, just don't look at the pattern. <laughs> um, this is how I, I like the fact that when you're stitching on a scroll rod, you can either have your pattern sitting here or I put it here with um, my a needle minder. I like to have my pattern right in front of me. That's like the biggest thing. Besides being able to see the whole length of the picture of um, what I'm stitching. Yeah, I mean, scroll rods, th there's just no comparison in my opinion to, um, let me turn you guys back around. There's no comparison to Q-snaps or hoops. I have, I have everything. I have hoop, hoops, I have Q-snaps, I have all of that. And I've never been 100% happy with them. My favorite thing that I've ever used has been scroll rods because for a long time I stitched on my Stitchmate stand. And that's another stand that I'll be able to use once I get a new chair if I really feel like it because it has a pretty big wood base that has to fit under a chair. I mean, that's why the Case Creations has been um, in storage, you know, in a closet because I haven't been able to use it because I can't fucking fit it under the chair. So it's just gonna open up a whole world of being able to use whatever stand I want to use when I get that chair. I just hope that I really like it. I mean, I spent a lot of time yesterday measuring because what's nice about Wayfair is for most of the chairs, they tell you the seat dimension, the height from the floor to the arm. I mean, they really give you all of the dimensions of the chair so you can really figure it out. And yeah, so I can't wait to get it. I mean, bright orange, it's gonna look so awesome in this office, I think. Okay, I did get in the mail yesterday two needle minders and they are from Busy Beaver Boutique. So I will link that down below. I got three needle minders. I just love these. Hello, I'm trying my best. Adulting would not recommend. <laughs> and then, this one's funny too. Oh, I'm off today. I was supposed to have a job today and it canceled. So I really think I'm going to be off all this week because our Friday job canceled too. And I don't think she's gonna really be pressed to take anything because we have the arbitration next week for two days. I run a tight shipwreck, <laughs> right? Isn't that hilarious? Okay, so I will link that Etsy shop down below. And let's talk about my nails for a second because, so when I've been applying the Color Street, I've been putting the Hollow Taco peelable um, base coat underneath so it's real easy to pick off. Well, I had just done my nails on Sunday and I really liked it. It was called Holidays, D-A-Z-E. Well, in the midst of moving so much stuff around my office yesterday and all of that, I had like severely chipped both middle fingers. And I, what are the odds of that? And I was like, well, shit, I, I can't go. I mean, it was chipped badly. So I said, okay, I'm just going to redo my nails. 
And I picked them all off yesterday, which I mean, it just came right off. But then I was like, I have so many of these Ohora gel nails. Um, these are partially cured, but they're sticky on the, on the um, underside. So you apply them, you cure them under a light. And I literally have like 10 sets. I mean, I just went crazy. They had like a big sale and I bought a whole bunch. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to apply those. They take longer to apply than Color Street because you have to cure it under the light. I cut the excess with nail scissors, file it. I've gotten the, the procedure down pat. But when I pulled these out, I was like, oh, these are cool. It's like silver glitter and gray. That's, that's fine. And when I put them on downstairs in my bedroom, I only have like my corner lamp that I'm doing it by. So it's not like bright, bright light. So I apply it. Okay, cool. I wake up this morning and I go to put laundry in and I flick on the laundry light. And when I'm putting in, I look at my nails and I'm like, oh my God, it's green. Can you guys, yeah, you guys can tell. It is mint green and this is like green glitter. I loved it. I absolutely love this. So I did every other finger glitter. Yeah, don't they look so good? And these usually stay on a good bit, a good week and a half, two weeks. What winds up happening is my hair winds up catching underneath and then it annoys me. But they peel off. You just put a little bit. You can put a little bit of acetone. But they usually peel right off very easily. So I love them. And I think these look really good. They look, it looks really, really good. Like I said, it took me 15 minutes. I mean, nothing, nothing crazy. But okay. So today's inspirational story is called the story about the spoon this should be good because it's like about the lord and all that okay so a holy man was having a conversation with the lord one day and said lord i would like to know what heaven and hell are like mm. okay the lord led the holy man to two doors he opened one of the doors and the holy man looked in. In the middle of the room was a large round table. In the middle of the table was a large pot of stew, which smelled delicious and made the holy man's mouth water. The people sitting around the table were thin and sickly. They appeared to be famished. They were holding spoons with very long handles that were strapped to their arms and each found it possible to reach into the pot of stew and take a spoonful. But because the handle was longer than their arms, they could not get the spoons back into their mouths. So the holy man shuddered at the sight of their misery and suffering. And so the Lord said, you have seen hell. Yeah, that would be pretty bad. Kind of like there was a Twilight Zone story one time where this guy just hated life and just wished he could be like surrounded by books for his whole life. Well, the world ended or something happened and he was like in this tower of books and then he stepped on his glasses and broke them. So he couldn't read for the rest of his life, but he was surrounded by books. Yeah. Okay. So they went to the next room and opened the door and it was exactly the same as the first one. Okay, there was the large round table with the large pot of stew, which made the holy man's mouth water. The people were equipped with the same long-handed, long-handled spoons, but here the people were well-nourished and plump, laughing and talking. And so the holy man says, I don't understand. And the Lord said, it is simple. It requires but one skill. You see, they have learned to feed each other while the greedy think only of themselves. So because the spoon was so long, they were able to spoon out the stew and feed the person across from them. And in turn, that person would feed them, right? So that is fantastic, isn't it? Like the same exact thing. The people in the first room were just pissed they couldn't feed themselves. They weren't concerned about anyone else. And you know, in all of the... Um, Things that I've heard, you know, motivational things I've heard online and the YouTube and all that. The one thing that is like a persevering theme is that people say, if you are able to help someone 
and you help them, then God will help you in your time of need. Like you will be helped also. And I know it's really hard to think about that in some respects and see my idea of helping someone though is not doing it for them. I will help someone who is helping themselves as in, let's say you're moving into an apartment and you are putting forth the effort of finding furniture, getting people lined up to move, um, doing all these kinds of things. If you need help in those areas and you've done everything you can of your own accord, okay, I will help you where, you know, however I could. However, if you are not putting forth that effort and you expect everyone else to do it for you because time's running out or whatever, no, that's not going to work. No. Um, it's almost like taking advantage of people's good nature. So there's a fine line there. But those people in the room, they found a way, right? And that's such a fantastic story, though. But yeah, I am i don't mind. My mom and I have talked about this many times. I don't mind helping people that help themselves. Um, and I really, me, I don't like asking people for help. When I, if I ask someone for help, it's because I've exhausted every effort to do it on my own. And that is really what it comes down to, too, is exhausting every effort on your own for doing something before you ask someone to do something for you. So take with that what you will, right? But okay, I am going to end this here. I think I am going to do a tutorial video today um, showing my how to stitch a long line, you know, every 10 crossing the X. I know some people are more visual than other people. Um, that should only be a couple minute video. It should be very, very quick to show you. But when I saw it online and I forget where I saw it, I was like, OMG. And that's why I belong to a lot of those cross stitch groups because they just impart so much wisdom. I mean, I don't know everything about cross stitch, even stitching for 35 years. I do not know everything. I love learning something else, though, that I can pass on to you guys. So look for that today. That is my plan. Okay, so I'm going to be inserting this, like, somewhere towards the end of the video before I say my last little spiel. I just realized I ended the video and didn't give us our little tip of unfucking ourselves in this year. So I turned off the camera and I looked at it and I went, God damn it. All right. So for today, January 11th, Blaming is the cheap way out. Own it. Meaning, if you have committed an error or a mistake, just own up to the mistake instead of trying to blame someone else for the, for the situation that you're in. Now, sometimes it isn't your fault. Um, but most times, right? Here's what it looks like. Blaming is the cheap way out. Own it. Okay, back to the video. So, as always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.